Yo, what's up, Internet? My name is Anthony, and today we're continuing our NFL Power Ranking series. At number 30, we have the Cleveland Browns. I really like what they've been doing so far, and I feel like they're building the team the right way. Let's go. In 2016, the Browns had low expectations going into the season and finished with the first pick in the draft. RG3 went into the season as the starting quarterback and got hurt quickly. Throughout the season, the quarterbacks rotated in and out. The lone bright spot on the offense was Terrell Pryor. He played wide receiver full time and finished with a pretty good season, especially considering the quarterbacks. Overall, the Browns were terrible in offense and defense. Even with the lack of talent on offense, the Browns let Terrell Pryor go. The Browns know that they'll have to overpay and hope that Corey Coleman will have developed enough to be the number one receiver. I personally loved what they did on the offensive line. They signed J.C. Treader and Kevin Zeitler. No matter who will be playing quarterback for them, the quarterback will be well protected. In the draft, the Browns didn't mess up the first pick. They selected the best player in the class by picking Miles Garrett. Then they traded back, got another first round pick next year, and selected Jabril Peppers. With another first round pick, they got a player who might be a steal in David Njoku. The Browns rightfully didn't reach for a quarterback. With the stockpile of talent and draft picks, the Browns are building for the long term. The Browns' only real weapon left in free agency. The only weapons left are potential weapons in Corey Coleman and David Njoku, a rookie and a second year player who got injured. The positives are along the offensive line. They have an all pro in Joe Thomas and a Pro Bowl level player in Joel Betonio. Along with the free agent additions of Treader and Zeitler, the Browns have the makings of a dominant offensive line. The only problem is they don't have many weapons to strike fear on defenses. Joe Hayden and Jamie Collins are established players on defense. Even then, Hayden is getting up there in age and Collins has a tendency to freelance on defense. With that being said, the addition of Miles Garrett brings a new level of potential. Garrett can be a game wrecker and a franchise player. If things work out well, this defense can be better than expected. The main problem, as it has been for a while with the Browns, is their quarterback. They were smart in not reaching for a quarterback this year in the first round. They got Deshaun Kaiser in the second round, and he has potential to be a good quarterback. However, they don't have anyone who can win games for them. Osweiler was picked up since the Browns had cap room, and a second round pick was included. He might end up being the starter this year, but it's doubtful he'll be the long-term starting quarterback. Best case, they sneak in some wins and finish at 6-10. The offensive line dominates the time of position and keeps games close. The defense looks great, and the trio of Hayden, Collins, and Garrett makes things difficult for opposing offenses. The Browns catch some teams on their bad days and remind the league that any team can win on any given Sunday. In the worst case, the Browns finish with the top pick again and finish at 2-14. The Browns' awful quarterback play haunts them. They struggle to move the ball on offense, the lack of weapons is apparent, and they have a carousel of players playing quarterback. Miles Garrett doesn't have enough help around him, and not enough plays are being made on defense. The secondary gets beat and gives up chunk yardage. This might also be the best case scenario since it allows them to get a quarterback of their choice in the loaded quarterback class next year. In the most likely case, the Browns finish at 3-13. The defense is average and can stop teams occasionally. Hayden looks a little slow and more cornerback help is needed. The offensive line plays well, but the offense struggles as a whole without a quarterback. The weapons of Coleman and Njoku show up, but aren't enough to carry the offense. Kaiser plays okay, but the Browns would rather pick a quarterback in the draft. I have a feeling that the Browns are going to be sneaky this year. They're going to win some games they're not supposed to, and remind the league that any team can win on any given Sunday. They're building the team the right way, through the draft and by collecting talent. If they can get a quarterback, they're going to be a team on the rise. Thanks for watching, guys.